Okay, um, thank you for having me here today. So I'm going to take a step back, actually kind of turn the other way and talk more about the design processes. So about how, how we've been doing at the Design Lab, designing interfaces, interactions, and also experiences, not only using um, bio, like, biotech, but also with other, other materials, responsive materials, adaptive materials, and so forth. So it's going to be somewhat different from very you know, science-heavy presentations that we've been hearing, but more about the methods and processes that we've been kind of thinking about and also adopting in our work. So and this takes through you know, the five steps that you're all familiar with, right? About identifying user values, what are the experience values that we want to embed? into designing of a product or an experience, and how can we then evaluate and map the emerging tech and materials and you know, the things that we want to bring in um, to enable the experiences. Of course, and then to follow, um, framing the ideation process um, from taking it to, from seed concept to full developed concepts, and then of course prototyping and iterating throughout the processes so you can really take that idea to a, a realized um, a, 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 an experience that can be storytelled to others. So one example that I brought today is um, the work that we've been doing with Puma, um, a sportswear company, in designing adaptive sportswear experiences. And with that, in our three-year collaboration, we've been looking at within the overall umbrella of adaptive dynamics, how can we create an adaptive to the user and also a dynamic experience with the sportswear. Um, from looking into programmable materials as one, um, looking at aesthetics, um, you know, bio design also another one of those, or pneumatics, um, embedded electronics. So there are different um, technologies or materials that we've been exploring within this overall um, topic of adaptive dynamics. And within that um, was all about kind of designing new experiences that we can really, you know, um, use in our daily life. And also, of course, using our body as an interface. So how can the changes in my body, heat, temperature, sweat, um, my movement, or you know, different ways how my body is um, reacting to my sportswear activities, and how that can inform the ad adaptation of your sportswear. And one of them was to use microorganisms to sense and actuate. And this was a work that we did with uh, BioRealize a few years ago in creating these four different experiments, from thinking about the packaging experience to a t-shirt that responds to, your, you know, to the environment, all the way to a, an insole that can react to sweat, as well as a shoe that will transform or biodegrade over time based on you know, the temperature level of the heat. And some of these work, especially with the uh, breathing shoe that's been also further developed by Puma um, in also working with you know, other um, laboratories and other um, designers, in addition to the design lab team here, to kind of taking the experience further and to think about how can it be shoeable and how it can be manufacturable um, and how that can really enhance the, the user experience. So in this one, the video that I'm showing here, it's all been developed as, you know, post our collaboration with Puma. So it takes the, you know, the, the sweat pattern of your foot, and then you can see that the, you know, shoe can maybe create a custom ventilation pattern based on how you sweat. So you may be able to use your sweat pattern as an aesthetic pattern of your foot as well. Um, and of course, so I'm going to talk a bit more about these five steps. So kind of going into the back end, the, our internal processes of how we come to these concepts. And the first one is um, identifying experience values. And within these values, we've been um, going a lot into these six categories of value experiences. And from playful engagement to how can you really show identity of the user. So I'm going to go through each one of those and kind of quickly share with you some of the experience values, value experiences, experiential values. We've been using different types of terminology. But so you can bring those into the designing of a new uh, product experience using the novel technology that we've been all seeing today. So one is on adaptability. And of course, this is all about customizing the experience of a product to the user's needs, making it personalizable. It could be about custom fit, about control, maybe fine tuning your shoes to your needs. And if you've seen the you know, bio, the Puma design that we, uh, the Puma bio design project that we did here. So what we've been doing with all of these values um, over the course of our work is to identify inspiring examples, including using ours as, a, as an 
as an example too, to really look at how is this product, um, what is the value behind it, um, what are the kind of keywords, what's the target group, what are the desired experiences, and where is it within the product timeline? Is it at the research level, at product launch, is it already launched? So we can also kind of map uh, where this technology is um, in, our, um, in our daily product experiences. Second is about wellness and safety, and I think this is also a, you know, an area that's being highly being explored within the wearable industry too, right, about how, how does it support the user through real-time sensing and then giving you the information, all the way to um, identity of how do you express yourself on aesthetics and then also ethics. Playful engagement, can you create an interactive and gamified and fun experience? Productivity, about enhancing the performance of the user, and then maybe it's also about kind of creating a durable product also. And lastly, efficiency. So how is it um, convenient for the user? Can it do also be a multi-purpose product as well? And then these, um, based on that, these areas, we've been also looking at the materials and technology. Um, looking at these three categories, um, is it user-friendly, the technology that we're seeing? Um, can it be shoeable in this case? Meaning, can it be, is it lightweight? Can it be manufacturable? Is it, what's the response time? Um, and also, of course, manufacturable, if you take this from the lab to the, the factories, how can it be adopted within that manufact existing manufacturing processes? Um, I'm going to skip through quite a bit. So these are some of the, you know, the technologies that we've been looking at. And within framing the ideation, it's also then kind of crossing the values. Can we come up with the new experience value by crossing, you know, adaptability with, you know, gamified, fun experience, and vice versa. And looking through the all aspects, right? What does it do? Who's a user? What is it doing for the user? What are they enabling tech? Then how does it work? Is it just a standalone product? Or can we think about an ecosystem of product experiences with digital, physical, all of that? Um, and then from the seed concepts, the full experience, it's really kind of going in depth into each of these levels and identifying what's the level of customization, how much involvement does it you know, require from the user, what is it being triggered, is it from the physiological response to user's action. Um, you know, so these are some of the elements that we've been thinking about as we take the seed concept ideas into developing a full product. And then, of course, mapping these into a, some more you know, easy to visualize so we can also compare the different concepts together. Um, for example, these are some of the four initial seed concepts that we've been looking at that uses um, hydrogel as an actuator in this case. Um, and this helped us to look through the criteria of evaluating between feasibility, is this manufacturable system of performance, is it easy to use, is it light to wear, for, you know, to, since it's uh, designed to enhance the performance of the user, and also what's the visibility of technology, since we're using these novel tech, can this innovation feature be visible to the user, um, and also the engagement level of the user in activating and using this experience. So a lot of the work has been going into kind of designing and prototyping, you know, these different um, material prototypes. And the current um, concept that we're, we're working on at the moment is with the long distance runner. So within the marathon running, can we think about a face changing shoe that you start with wearing at one moment and then when you're at your, you know, uh, later 30 or 40 kilometer, bar, kilometer mark when you're hitting the wall, can the shoe help you to really sustain that performance level by changing maybe the cushioning of the insole, midsole, um, and so forth. Um, yeah, so this is a, a concept that we're working on that have been generated from this uh, uh, steps of processes, and um, yeah, we'll be happy to share that with you later when it's fully more fully developed. Yep. So, thank you.